Hello everyone, this is Prem Kumar. In this video, we are going to talk about the single sign-on. I am going to start with a very simple example. Let's say you are going for a vacation and you are checking inside a hotel. During the checking in process, usually the receptionist will be verifying your ID card. They will verify your identity and then they will let you in. Now let's say you have successfully checked in into the hotel and you find lot of resources in the hotel. For example, you have a swimming pool, you have the restaurant to enjoy and you have gyms. You want to access all these resources. If the hotel, they have some kind of identity verifications. For example, if you want to use swimming pool, then you may need to provide your identity or passport. Similarly, for gym and for restaurant, if you want to provide your identity again and again, will you be happy with this customer treatment? Of course not. You don't want to verify your identity again and again since you already verified it during the time of check-in. So how this can be done is, during the check-in process on successful verification, they may provide you some kind of token. You can consider it kind of access token. So with the access token, then you can access the resources or you can get into the restaurants and swimming pool and enjoy your stay at the hotel. So what you see here is, you get one token with which you can access all those resources. Now I'm going to compare this example with the IT terminologies. So with single sign-on, what you get is, you get one set of authentication or login credentials with which you can access different applications. You don't need to have separate separate passwords. Let's look at some of the advantages of using the single sign-on. The first thing is, no more separate credentials for different applications. As I told before, you are going to have one set of credentials with which you can log in and then you can access different applications using the same credentials. The next thing is there is no frustration for forgot password. You don't want to reset your password every time again and again. The third advantage is you can seamlessly access different applications. You won't be presented every time with the login page. You can just navigate between applications easily. These are the things I considered as a high level advantage. You may have little disadvantage also on the security side because if the passwords are compromised, then the hacker may get access to different applications and he may do whatever he wants. Okay, now let's go more technical. Let's talk about the federated identity management. We now know that we can access different applications using single set of login credentials. So where do these credentials get stored? Do we need to store each copy of the credentials under each application? No, ideally not. We will have our own identity management system. If you take any big organization, for example, if you take a banking organization, they will have some kind of directory services where all the employee details will be stored. From that, they will provide the identity and the access management for the employees. Now, different applications can connect to this identity management system to verify or to authenticate and authorize the users. By this way, you are just going to use single login username and password which is stored into the IAM or the identity and access management which will be used by different applications by using the single sign-on. If you talk about single sign-on, mostly you must have come across these three things. One is OAuth, two OpenID, three SAML. I want to little rephrase my title. I want to say it is OAuth versus OpenID and SAML. The main reason is there is main difference between OAuth and the other two. OAuth is the open standard authorization framework whereas the OpenID and SAML are the industry standards for the access management or authentication. OpenID is built over this OAuth framework layer whereas in SAML it has its own XML messaging standards. Definitely in real time you must have come across all these authorization and authentication mechanism. For example, OAuth 100% I'm sure you must have come across this. Whenever you want to do some sign up or login into some kind of different app or games, then they will recommend you to sign up using Google or Facebook, right? That is where the OAuth comes into picture. If you use sign up via Facebook, then they will ask you to provide some access. Like if they can use your profile information, the profile pictures, everything. When you provide the access or you are granting the authorization to the application. And OAuth usually they work between applications. Like one application can get the access from the other application. Whereas the Open ID and SAML, it mostly works with the authentication. For example, let's take Google. 
if you logged in into Google and then if you click on YouTube, you can seamlessly navigate to YouTube. You will not be challenged again with the username password because they have their own single identity provider where your Google credentials are verified and from there you can access YouTube, you can access Drive, you can access any Google apps from there. Now I will explain the single sign-on flow using the SAML. SAML stands for Security Assertion Mockup Language. First, let's talk about a very simple example. What you see in the screen, in the address bar, I want to update my account settings. Now, if I click enter, what Facebook does is, it gives me the login page so that only after authentication, I can edit my account settings, right? If I provide the password here, then I can log in and from there, I can update my account settings. Now, if you look at this picture, this represents what we did just now. First, as a user, I try to access the resource of updating the account settings. Since I didn't log in, Facebook prompted me with the login page. So once I provide the login credentials, then I can update my account settings. So what are the participants here? There is two direct participants, one me as an end user and two Facebook as an application. In SAML, participants can be referred as a different terms. User can be called as principal and then Facebook is the service provider because I wanted to access the Facebook resource. And here Facebook also provides the identity provider because Facebook provides the login page and it asks to validate. This can be considered like a very basic authentication. Okay, now let's talk about the single sign-on. What you see in the screen is the single sign-on flow. Here you see there are three participants. One, the principal or the user. And the second is the server, which is the service provider. And third is the identity provider. You can consider this identity provider as your Active Directory. So as a first step, when you want to log in into the application or the service provider, you launch it from a web browser. So that will be the first step. The second step will be the web server. It generates the SAML request and then it redirects to the IDP. As a third step, the IDP, it accepts the SAML request and checks if the user is already authenticated. Let's say the user is never authenticated into this identity provider. Then the identity provider can provide the login page and then the fifth step, the user can provide the login credentials. These two can be optional steps. That's why I marked it in red. If the user is already authenticated, then the IDP will never prompt for the login page. It will directly go to the sixth step of sending the access token. As a seventh step, this token can be redirected to the service provider. And as a eighth step, the service provider, now it can validate the SAML response and validates the token. If it is a valid token, then it consider the user as an authenticated user. And finally, it can return the resource or it can allow the user to log in into the application. So this is how the flow works for an application. Okay, now let's say one application, it uses the single sign-on and the user has validated against the identity provider and then a access token is sent. And now let's say if the user, he wants to use the another application, he already authenticated the identity provider. So identity provider is not going to give the login page. Instead, it will directly pass the token. By this way, you don't want to log in every time. You just log in only once and then the generated access token can be used by different applications for their login purpose. Just think, if you are working in any kind of IT organization, definitely you will have some kind of employee id right so how do you authenticate with your organization's application maybe your organization might be using the microsoft login so you will be logging in only against the microsoft identity providers and once successfully logged in you may have access to different organizations applications maybe the timesheet application or the hr related application for all those applications you may have the direct single sign-on access there are different identity providers available in the market and different organizations, they choose their own preferred identity provider. I hope I made it clear on this single sign-on. See you in the next video.